Right, good morning. Uh, Tuesday morning now. I did, I finished, uh, well I didn't finish, uh, I more or less finished uh, Peach's um, JJ Custom Jewel Guitar yesterday. That's back in its case. That now just needs a, I put the uh, nut on. That now just needs a setup and probably a little bit of carving on the nut because the action's a bit high at the nut end. Uh, I didn't go with the new nut in the end uh, because I put the old nut on and the old nut is eyeing off. I just reckon, Pete, you weren't happy with the old nut, but the reason, you see, the reason you weren't happy was the setup on the guitar went right. That nut is actually, I thought the nut was a bit low myself, but it's not. But the thing is about the new nut, it's slightly thinner than the old one. Um, so the new one doesn't uh, quite grip in the slot as good as the old one does. And I put the old one back in, it's high enough, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to reshape and re radius the new knot and recut the slot so that's going to be absolutely fine so I've got the setup to do on that so I've moved on to the next guitar and the next guitar is if I move out the road uh, this is the PV Jack Daniels the American Gulbins there you go beauty what a beautiful top that is it's all on the jig it's all jigged out it's all zeroed out on the jig I'll show you if I just come in a little bit more uh, let's just move that round a tad so we need to get central. I've got the camera in a slightly new place. It's a little bit higher up, a bit, a bit more of an angle. Gives us a better view. And we come in here, and I've already got... We're already level with the frets this morning. I was up at 6 this morning. I come in the workshop about 6.30. Start working. Start working on this round about 7 o'clock-ish, I think. A bit after 7. Got the fret levelling done. Um, there were quite a few high frets, there were 13 areas, not 13 frets, but no, there was 18 areas, not 18 frets. Each fret has three areas, it's got the left side, the centre and the right side, or left, centre, right, from front to back. <clears throat> and when you've got 22 frets, you're looking at 66 places where we can have high spots. Well, I went over, there were 18 high spots and some were quite high, so what I did was, I went over with the coarse side, the 240 grit, to get everything all levelled off. Once I got it levelled off, I went across again with the fret rocker. And where we had some slightly high, still in places, what I did was I went across just with the number three, number three cut file. I took them down a little bit by hand, then I went across, put marker all over the top again, then I came across with the 400 grit side to make sure we're all level. And all we did with the 400 grit is just skimmed across lightly, and just, just took the pen off. Once the pen was off in all areas, which only took a few strokes, took a couple of strokes each, each in each section, it came off more or less straight away. So now we know the frets are level. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the um, fretboard cleaned up. I'm going to get it all taped up, and I'm going to get ready for um, ready for crowning the frets. And we're going to do the same job as the JJ. We're going to give a recrown, get them up on the other bench, get them polished. Why I'm working on this? Once this has gone on the other bench for the polishing, I'm going to finish the setup on the JJ. Um, and then I may, I may either come back to this and do the polishing or I might get the um, axis out and take the frets out and get it all ready for getting the new frets in. It's not going to go on the jig. Uh, I'm not refretting on the jig anymore, I'm refretting on the, on the neck bench over there. Um, and I'll be using, rather than fretting and hammering stuff in and possibly damage anything, I'm going to be supporting this new cradle. I've got now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be altering this cradle shortly because I've seen a um, I saw one of these put a cradle the other day on a tilt. Uh, I was it Alan Four Four I think it was Alan Four Size page. I look on there. He got one of these and it was drilled through, and it was on a tilt pivot. What a brilliant idea! It means you can have your guitar, any guitar, and it's going to fit in there. So I'm going to build one of those. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to support the block, get the neck under there. I'm going to refret by hand. On the other table so that's how we're going to do things now so anyway i'm going to crack on with this we're going to get it taped up and um i'll come back later with another update stay tuned right this is just a tiny section just to split uh, to split two videos up and separate two videos because i've accidentally deleted a part of a video on the uh, pv jack daniels when it was on the bench because i've done all the fret leveling but I'm, not only that, the last part you saw, I've finished the fret levelling, but I've also finished all of the fret polishing. Um, but I've accidentally deleted the video, so we're going to now jump on to the next part of the video where, um, well, I'll explain it all in the next video, as you're going to see from here. So this is why you're going to see me in this white shirt, because I've had to slip this bit of video in. 
You're going to see the next two parts where I'm wearing my black shirt, which was all day today. Then I took my black jacket off and I come back to my white shirt later. As you can see, it's dark now, even though the rest of the video is going to be from this morning. Uh, I hope you followed that. Just watch the video and uh, see you soon. Right, good afternoon. Uh, I'm at a slightly different angle today because there's a couple of things I need to bring up in this um, section of the uh, Peachy Goodness. Uh, videos and uh, there's been developments on the cupboard developments not just on the JJ but also on the uh, Jack Daniels guitar now the Jack Daniels guitar I did the fret level and as you've seen uh, done all the polishing it's all finished and I didn't I haven't done a follow-up video to that finishing the polishing off is the reason for that is when I removed the nut of the guitar I didn't notice it at the time but the, there was a lot of lacquer holding that nut in and uh, I removed the nut as normal getting a bit of a clunk with a small mallet small wooden mallet and when it chunked out, it took a great chunk of paint with it. Now that is not a disastrous thing, uh, but they did not even a disaster. But the bad thing happened when I put it back on. I'm going to zoom in to the screen because I've been in touch with Peter, and the guitar at the moment is Dan in Grantham with Clive Eastwood from Beaver Guitars or Belvoir Guitars, and there's a reason for that. Now the thing is, when I put this uh, nut back in, you couldn't see. I couldn't see the drawing, it looked great, but I was not happy with the nut itself. Now I'm going to bring it on again. This is where it took out the chunk. And I could have glued that in, made it more or less invisible, but I wouldn't have been happy with that. I wanted to touch this area up. So uh, here's the nut came off with that. Now, you don't see it here, but the actual thickness of the lacquer on this nut was about too much thick, far too much. And even though I'd scored this area, the paint still came out with it. You know, it's sometimes it's one of the pitfalls we get sometimes. So, I want to be happy with that. But what I noticed on put is, is, is the nut back in the guitar look, but you can still see this line. Now, Rob Peach himself, and you can see a bit of a line there. Now, Rob Peach himself said, Don't worry about that, it happens on guitars. But now I want to happy with it. So, I decided to go and take it to Clive Eastwood at Beaver Guitars and have a chat with him, uh, which I did. And we went there, and there it is again, look. I want to be happy with that. So I'm trying to clean the area up, I made it a bit more of a mess. I, always, I already knew I needed to spray this area and clear it up with some uh, lacquer. Um, but I thought, I take it to someone who knows what they're doing with this. I don't do paint here, but Clive does. He's only down the road, he's only 30 mile up road in Grantham. So I took it to him, we sat down and made a chat, we looked at it. And you see here, it wouldn't have been good enough. It hadn't seated properly when I put it back in. More my fault, but I had glued it in. So I was going to have to sand this down and re-spray it. So I decided to take it to Clive. Anyway, I took it to Clive and we looked at this area. And it was only on looking with Clive that we saw that if you, if you follow the mass here, these grooves are okay. But when it got to these, there's no grooves here. No grooves at all. Now, I had already ascertained that this nut was cut too low, but removing this nut was going to be a problem because there was so much gloss here. We didn't want to got the nut out without smashing all this area up again and making it bad. So what we decided to do, me and Clive, was to saw through this nut and remove it cleanly, which Clive has done. And then it came to a matter of we've got to sand this area down, re-spray it, then we're going to have to re-gloss it, fix it all up. So I took it to Clive, it's going to be at my expense. And that's the way we're going to go about it. Um, so it's with Clive at the moment. Anyway, moving on, this is what we've done. And this is where we are now. We have removed the old nut. And we've roughed up this area. Clive is going to lacquer this. He's going to spray this, uh, matching up the colour, and he's going to gloss it again. I'm going to fit the nut. So there you go. That's where we are. So this is all ready now. We're going to blend in. We're going to call. It's called blowing in this area. Now I've already decided because I smashed up the nut. I've decided it's going to be at my expense. But Robert, in his kindness, has said, you know, don't want to chip in towards it. And I said, no, not at the moment. You know, and we'll we'll see about it later. See how much it costs. But anyway. That's where we are with this guitar. I'm going to go back to that one. And it only seems right, well it is right, that I put this guitar right anyway. Now we could not have foresaw that big chunk coming out. Well we could have foresaw it, foreseen it, but with that big chunk, chunk coming out, and I know Rob would have said a little bit if these things happen and it's, it's fine. You know what I mean? I want the guitar to be worth what it's worth when he bought it to me. And with that little bit of damage on there, it would have detracted from the value. Not that he's going to sell it. So I thought, no, I'll take it, and I wanted to go and see Clive anyway, because I've never met him in person before, so I wanted to go and sit with him. I went to sat with him, we had a chat for a good hour and a half yesterday, 
spent some time together, brilliant. Uh, I, I love meeting luthiers. I, I, I'm very lucky in the area that I live where I'm surrounded by good luthier. Now I'm not a luthier, I'm a guitar tech. I repair guitars, you know, which is different to building guitars. And in a way, and Clive was on about it, it's just sometimes it says, what you do is actually more difficult than what I do because he's building guitars, he's responsible for all that thing, but he's building them methodically. So when he builds things step by step, we more or less always go right, but with me, when I'm repairing guitars, I can touch one part of the guitar and it can removing one part can knacker another part, which is what happened with this. Uh, so in a way, you know, my job's a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying as skilled. I mean, moving on, moving forwards, in time, I want to be a guitar builder, but I'm very lucky in that I'm in an area of the Midlands where I'm surrounded by a good luthier, and I've got, I've got Clive, who's 30 miles away. I've got Nigel Roberts down in Leicestershire. He's 30 miles away. I, spend, I don't spend a lot of time with Nigel, but Nigel's the luthier I visit the most because he's the first one I met. Um, I, I've took work down to him. He's done work for me. And he's a very knowledgeable guy and he's very, very humble in the way he does things. Not so much humble in the way he does things, but humble in, in the sharing and giving of information, as is Clive, don't get me wrong. And I can go and sit with Nigel. I could spend two, three hours with him and he likes nothing better than passing on knowledge he's given me. He's gifted me tools, he's given me so much knowledge in things, showing me better ways to do things. And he's, got, he's always got tips and he's always happy to talk about good ways and better ways to do things for me to improve my skills, for me to develop from a guitar tech and move on into being a guitar builder. So fantastic. So these are the guys, I trust these guys. And if there's something I can't do, like for instance, I can't do paint and touching up here because the place isn't big enough and I don't have the tools. But I can go and spend some time with uh, Clive, like Clive Eastwood down at Beaver Guitars here. His place is magnificent. He's built it himself. He's got sheds. He's built himself, and he's joined one to another to another. And he can do anything from from the start of a lump of wood to go into building a completed and spray, sprayed guitar that he's done himself. And it is amazing the, the amount of work he does. He probably doesn't give himself enough of a pat on the back. Uh, but a skill like that is amazing. It's great to go and meet these genuine good people as well, and to spend time with them and for me to learn things. So. That's why I've took that down to Clive anyway. Uh, this is going to be the outcome of this guitar. We're going to get all the spray areas going to be done right. The nut's going to come as a blank. I'm going to cut the nut when it gets back here. So that is, for my peace of mind, that's going to make me up here. But now moving on, I've got one guitar and Nigel's to do now. It should be done already. I've been that busy. I've got 11 guitars in this room queued up, ready to work on. So now I'm moving on to the uh, early ball axis, the, um, the Eddie Van Alien Gubbins. And it's still intact, I've not touched anything. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to whip the strings off, take the tremolo off and everything. I'm going to remove the neck and I'm going to get this neck, uh, I'm going to get the frets out. Now, I've had a look to see if it's varnished. I don't think it's varnished. I think these frets are going to come out pretty easy because they're just pressed in, down. They're not pulling sideways or anything. So I'm going to have a go at getting these out and I'm going to, I'm going to come back with some updates here and there. And what I'm going to do is then we're going to get this jigged up. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to get the new frets in, get them all pressed in, then we're going to get it jigged up and we're going to do a complete fret level on it uh, and a crown and a polish. So that's where we are with Now, it's Sunday today and I don't normally work on a Sunday, but yesterday, being as I was so busy yesterday and I had to nip out to Clive's up into Grantham, uh, I didn't do any work at all yesterday. I took the whole day off knowing I was going to be busy anyway after four o'clock. I went up to spend a night with my son last night, me and Michelle and my son and his fiance. We had, we had, a, we had a bit of a, a bit of, not porter. Spent some time with them around at their ass. Uh, they were really good fun. So I knew I won't I won't have no time. I would have had two hours yesterday. What's the point of me working for two hours? Whereas today, even with church this morning, I've still got a good five or six hours I can go in. So I've decided yesterday was my rest day. Today is uh, I can work today. So I can blob on with this. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get the strings off, I'm going to get the neck off, and we're going to get them frets out. And um, I'm going to come back with an update. Getting back to this shortly, there's also been a little development on the JJ guitar. When I was playing it, the, the strings, the D, not the D, the G and the B string were both ringing a little bit, sounding a bit sitarish. So I decided that the slots in the uh, nut itself weren't quite right. And they weren't quite, we weren't quite right. They were a little bit wide. And if I'd have cut them anymore, I'd have to cut deeper and would have gone too low. So I've decided again, I'm going to go and put a new nut on there, which is a little bit higher, and then I can recut it. So I'm putting a new nut on the JJ. Um, and that really is going to be it with that. I'll come back with an update on that later. I'll come back when I finalise uh, all the videos together and I'll show what we've done and where we've gone about fixing things. So that's it. So I'm going to blob on with this uh, axis right now. 
and I will come back again later with an update. Come back soon.